Good morning. It is Tuesday. And look what I've got in front of me. I went with the red one this time. This is the rainbow from Violetti. It's very interesting. I guess I didn't know how the paint would look in the places that you're not really supposed to see it in pictures. So, whew, I mean, that's, there's a little red right there. That's a little, hmm. There's some red in here. I mean, lots of overspray. I don't even know why there's overspray in here. This, I guess this, they paint underneath and then they stick this chrome piece on. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of red in there. Um, there doesn't seem to be any red in the reservoir itself, but it does creep up into the thread, which is really, really strange. Uh, but I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it is just fine and won't kill me. It's still made in Italy. It's still Bialetti, but it is the rainbow, which actually looks pretty cool. It's a cool looking little coffee maker. So we're going to get this uh, Costa Rica Las Lajas red honey, and I'm going to get that as finely fine as I possibly can without going over. Um, we will be doing, what is it? Usually I do like 20, 21 grams. That'll go into the little pot. All of these pieces are very similar to the original Mocha Express, but it's a lot more rounded, whereas the other one's got like a, kind of like a, a, a grooves in it. Yeah, the chamber's just, and it seems a little deeper, but that's because it's not as flared on the top, I think. It's neat. It's very fun. Mm. And these are wonderful beans. And note the notes. We'll see if we're going to get any of those if we, uh, <laughs> when we mock of this. Yeah. We've got 20, 21 grams here. I am going to remember to do a little bean mist. And shake it up a little bit. Coat the beans a little bit because we are going super fine here. Oop. Look, behold, the problem with uh, misting your beans. Hmm. <laughs> Dry that out just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I need, a, I need a cup that will allow me to pour it into the thing. So I need one of those gravy boats, those little gravy boats that you see, the fancy ones that everybody sees, the white ones, white fancy ones. If you go through Instagram and you've done enough stuff with looking at coffee, you'll come upon the people that have the little gravy boats uh, full of beans that they just missed and then they pour it into the, the hopper to grind. So let's see how this does. I've got it down to about, I mean, there's a zero, but I think I wanted to do about, about five out from that. It's going to take a while for it to grind, so uh, we'll, we'll be back in just a minute. It is not happy going, <laughs> going that uh, fine. Um, it does make a little bit of noise. It actually didn't take very long. There's a little clumping in there, but I think we'll be okay. Um, that's a nice, that's, that's a really fine grind there. I'm very happy with that. Um, for it not being a very expensive grinder, um, it's, I think it serves the purpose well for everything that we need it to. So I'm going to take it over here to the sink. We're going to fill up this. I think it actually did a very good job. Oh, I guess I could have done a little bit more coffee, couldn't I? It's not all the way up to the top. It's pretty close, but, um, yeah, we still got a little ways to go there, but that's all right. We'll ease it in. Okay. So we need to add... Ice cold, I want to add, not ice cold, but cold water. The, the bottom piece here is very similar. Or maybe even exactly the same. That might be a little too much. No, huh, right up to the relief valve. Good. So, you know, about a cup and some change of uh, water. We'll go right in there. We'll get this in. It'll float just a little bit. Oh, yeah, see, I did put just a little bit too much in there. Hmm. I think it'll be okay. We'll monitor and make sure. And I washed it all out because it just arrived yesterday. So I washed everything out. Um, yeah, boy, that overspray is very, very interesting. Um, and there's some roughness there. Um, hmm, I mean, I'm afraid 
there's some paint that's sticking up right here too. I can feel it in my fingers. So that would probably be the first, the first to go. <laughs> and I got to find the different, a different spot to where this uh, is tight. Cause I would use the, um, use the valve here and the position of the handle. Okay. So about like that, that is secure and it is not hot. It is cool. I'll wipe off the bottom. I'm going to go over here to the stove where I have my sugar prepared. Ooh, that base seems a little smaller. Hmm. That's interesting. Maybe I'm wrong. It says it's a six cup, but that's, uh, you know, that's relative, I think. To, uh, and I could do it on the back burner. That's a little bit more. Let me do it on the back burner back here there we go it just doesn't need to be out, out outrageously hot oh so you kind of got a good view in there maybe this position isn't so good for the maca pot but yeah i decided uh i i needed it back so i um on friday no saturday i just i just bought it I'm like, I, yeah, we'll just buy it off of Amazon. And then it showed up on Monday. So excitement. And it's nice because I wanted a red one. I bought the polished aluminum one without, you know, realizing that there was a variety of colors and a, a wide range. There's this funny one that looks like a beer hat. That's really interesting, but it's like single cups on either side. It's very fun, but it's just like single cups rather than a six cup. I don't really even need a six cup, do I? Not really. With the coffee this puts out, I like it. It's 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 got a beautiful color to it. See how long it lasts with the heat, and the paint is just really strange. And I know that the I thought the lid on the other one fit around the lip a little bit better. Eh, it's fine. Someone complain. I'm just pointing out what I see, and that's not really a complaint. I guess I would complain about the red paint along the top of the bout there. That's a little it's a little much. At least there's nothing in the water reservoir so it won't leach paint into the water as it heats up so that's that's a positive i think i've had enough paint chips in my life thank you very much yeah i don't really have much to talk about we're gearing up for the trip coming this coming saturday we're leaving we're heading to florida we're going to new smyrna beach hopefully i'll be able to get some footage of the coffee down there there's a coffee roaster down there that's off of the main drag it dead ends into the ocean but it's got all of the major it's got a bunch of major food places and shops and and it's it's your tourist trap area is what it is because it's got all the stuff uh tourists want um, the seashells that probably aren't from there the magnets the that kind of a thing i need to I, one thing i need to remember to do is i need to remember to buy a bottle opener we don't have strangely enough I, I probably do in one of the many, many, many crap boxes uh, downstairs, but I do not have a bottle opener up here that is functional. Other than the can opener, it's got a bottle opener on top of it, but it's like find it and fish it out and use that big thing. And it's not like I want to take it outside with me if I want multiple beers, if I'm sitting on the porch. So, but what are you going to do? Yeah, we're, uh, we're gearing up for the trip. It'll be fun. I'm very excited. It'll be nice to not be in cold weather. I'm going to visit my grandfather. He lives in Ocala, which is really nice. That should be a lot of fun. We're going to take him out to lunch and then see if he needs any odds and ends done around the house and then, you know, visit for a little while. I'm pretty excited about it. It's just been, it's, it, it got to a point where it was nice and warm and you could go out and wash your car. And then suddenly it just went back down into the 30s. And I've got a cherry tree out here it's, it's out it's out there the cherry tree that i would love to see bloom it would be wonderful if i could see it bloom but it, it got buds on it and the buds are haven't opened which is 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 good but still it's going to be like freezing temperatures i don't th think they're predicting any kind of frost but the freezing temperatures it's going to be like 25 26 27 uh, multiple nights so i'm just afraid that those Cherry blossoms are just going to die and fall off. And, you know, it's going to be a nice leafy tree again, which is good. It's surviving. It's thriving, which is what we were hoping for. 
with the third tree that we've had put back there, I think it was an entire year worth of uh, three separate trees that went back there because the, and I went over this last week with the removal of the topsoil and then using the worst modeling clay soil and uh, rocks to backfill in all of the home plots here. So things don't grow if you dig if you have to dig like a root ball down deep, they're not going to grow because the clay will act as a bowl and it will seal up and, in, and hold the water. So the roots will rot and the tree will basically drown and rot from the roots up. So, and that took two trees. The first one was aptly named choke cherry. And that's a whole nother story. The choke cherry fiasco of the condo community is is one of a legend apparently these choke cherries are poisonous to pets and children if they ingest the bark over like a series of months so if they're out there eating bark off of your tree every day for like three months it could become poisonous so everybody got really upset about that because you know if you do that to any tree out here i'm sure you would get sick if you ate bark from a tree for like three months, four months in a row. But these were in the back of people's houses and close enough to where their grandchildren could go and get a piece of bark every day for three or four months and eat it, which is bound to happen, especially in, in a rural area like this. How long have we been going here? I guess I should turn it up just a little bit. We have been going for a little while here. Definitely doesn't seem as efficient as the other pot. I mean, I would sit here and talk for like six or seven minutes and it would start to fill up and I'd have to stop and be like, oh shit. So it hasn't done that, which is very interesting. So we're looking at a totally different animal here. Let's see. We're going to grab those first couple of drops. I'm going to turn off the heat. I can hear it bubbling. So uh, I think I stopped just in time. So tons of people demanded to have their back trees changed, which is hilarious. I mean, they call them choke cherries. I mean, who's, who's on the marketing for that? This is really, this is a much hotter handle. Um, the other handle was not nearly this hot. I'm trying to find a place to grab it to where I don't hurt myself. Whew. That's a, that's a spicy meatball. Okay. This was too big of a, a vessel to do this in, I think. Put on a little bit more sugar. We'll give that another little poop. And then we're going to close the lid. I'm going to let it do its business while I'm Sugaring up my coffee, making everybody's ears hurt. This is supposed to get foamy. I don't know if I'm just doing I'm just doing it wrong. I do have the correct cup though this time. I think one of the um wind's blowing. Oh wait, no, it's the coffee going. I'm like, the wind's blowing. No, the coffee's finishing up. Let's take it off a hot grate. Yeah, boy, that handle. Hmm, that's it needs to be out just a little bit further, I think. The thing about this is, is that it goes into a little cup. I've been putting them into big cups and it's like a little bit of foam and then the foam is gone. So I've been putting them in big cups and I shouldn't be. They should be in small cups like this. How do we do, by the way? That's a wonderfully beautiful full pot of coffee. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. It worked out great. So cool. All right. So I'm going to take a little bit of this. That is still not foamy enough. Spin a little bit of it in there. The bottom. And then we're going to, I had to stir that up. That was definitely something that I watched them 
anyone that's used one of these pots, I've definitely watched them go in and make a little stir to get everything mixed up fairly well. It almost has like a peanut smell to it, which is very interesting. I don't know if that's off-putting to anyone or not, but is it breezy? Yeah, we're not getting what I want. Yeah, I am just sucking at this. There's just something that I'm missing. I'm watching people that have been doing it for years upon years upon years. And I'm just not grasping what is happening. And unfortunately, I'm out of milk. Hmm. Look at the bottom. Look at the coffee on the bottom here. It tastes really good. Um... Yeah, it just didn't, I just didn't get it frothy enough. Maybe it was too much, too much coffee and not enough sugar. I added some sugar, but that didn't seem to help. Um, it's supposed to be frothy and not like, bleh. So, oh well. We'll try it again next time. It does taste nice though. It balances out all the harsh bitterness that's kind of in a maca pot coffee. It's not a bad thing. It's just, you know. But yeah, look at that. Broke in the new maca pot, did it right the first time. At least maca wise, we've done the coffee correctly, I think. I just, maybe it just needs to be a dark roast. Before I do the next maca pot, we'll, uh, we'll go out and we'll get some Illy espresso roast pre-ground coffee. And we'll do it in that, and we're gonna we're gonna open up our minds and our palates and and experience that kind of a flavor because I mean, you know this is a light roast. No, it's not a light roast, is it? I can't remember. I would give that a medium roast. What do you think? I think it's a medium roast. Whoop! No. Ah, look at that. Anywho, thank you for watching today. I really appreciate it. Tomorrow we're going to do an AeroPress. Mm. Probably of that um, Costa Rica. I mean, you add the sugar in, you know, all of these flavors that I've tasted before, the strawberry, the orange, kind of disappear. This whole process removes a lot of these more subtle fruity flavors because it's just it just darkens up the coffee. It just makes it a lot more bitter. So, and in bitterness, you kind of lose some of these flavors. And um, yeah, there's definitely no strawberry here. Just a lovely coffee with not a lot of sugar. It didn't, it seemed like I put a lot of sugar in there, but it really doesn't, it's really not nearly as bad as the last time I did this, where uh, I did it in the big cup and then I poured everything into the big cup and mixed it around and it just it was just the sweetest Undesirable thing and then the beans and then I squirted the beans everybody I finally did a bean squirt and I'll tell you the other than it clumping just a little bit, which is natural um, There was no static And it, this thing ground Fine really well I mean that's that's pretty good. Those fines are pretty good. I think Thanks so much for watching this morning. I really appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow with the AeroPress. And we're going to put this through the AeroPress. And we're going to talk about whatever comes up. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.